Okay, so um, the next step is that we need to uh, take this collection of distance values and put them onto a single list so that we can uh, sort them, right? Uh, sorting is something that can only be done on a one-dimensional list. So if we have a data structure right now that is uh, A, we have one level, um, how might we go back to a single list and remember that we're not going to use flatten in this course. We're going to use some alternative options. So what would be a different way uh, than flatten to get back to a single list? All right, this one's a tricky one because um, we don't actually have much to work with, at least that what is visible when we look at the uh, data paths. We just have A. But if we use our flip matrix again, which is under tree, we can take something that is um, a bunch of paths with one item on them and turn them into one path with a bunch of items on them, right? So the flip will work uh, as a flatten in this case. Um, and I, I prefer it that way. I kind of like to think about that way because uh, later on I'm going to then flip it back so that it is on, each element is on its own list through the data tree. So we're going to use a flip. So we are now back to a single list. We'll go ahead and sort this list. So we're going to go back to the sets list um, tab and we'll sort the list. These are the things that will um, will sort and these elements, whatever goes into A, will go with uh, that collection of uh, sortable keys. So we'll put the flip into here. My things that I want to sort with that are actually going to be not my polylines themselves, but their data path. So I'm going to, from the tree statistics, I'm going to get all of the data paths as, and again, this Remember, it returns a list. So we now have um, the paths that will be resorted based on their proximity to this point. So you'll see not an uh, ascending uh, collection of paths, but one that is organized based on their uh, location, right? Okay, so perfect. Um, so these are going to be the distance values, and these are going to be the new paths. Uh, that we're going to use to uh, redefine where these objects are located within the data structure. All right. So here coming out, we have those uh, those strings right that define the path. So we're going to go ahead and decompose those. If we go to a tree, uh, decompose path. So we get just the numbers, right? Right, so now this is the new number that's going to go uh, on the to become the path of our uh, geometry from back here, right? So instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, what was 4 is going to become something else based on this path. All right, so let's go ahead and um, look at how we can do that. That's going to be through the replace. So I'm going to go to my sets tree tab again and look at replace branches. All right, now this object takes in the data stream based on a particular search mask. It will replace those, um, those paths with a new path. Right? So um, the data that we want to, um, the, the data stream we want to operate on is all the way back here. That's the polylines themselves. All right? So we have D. Right? The uh, search masks are going to be the original data paths as defined back here, right? And it has to be a list, right? It can't be a data tree. It has to be a list. So coming in here, we have the original one, which is in the ascending order, right? And for R, we could come straight from the uh, reorganized um, collection from A directly into R. So now the elements are going to be reshuffled in the data structure so that the data structure's paths are ascending again, and the, um, the polylines are now in a new order. Now let's go ahead and use our little trick again, which was to 
uh, get the polygon center and then um, use the pointless display. All right, I'll flatten that even though I said that we weren't going to do that and hide some more stuff. And now we can see that our curves are not exactly reorganized. They are reorganized in a particular way, but not in the way uh, that we wanted them to be. All right, so what we need to do is uh, make a modification uh, to our um, to our results here, which is going to be to take the result of our sort and do uh, a modification to it. So instead of directly replacing the, uh, the paths here, we're going to use the results of the sort to do one other thing first, right? So here we have our um, our collection of um, new uh, paths and based on this dist set of distance values we're going to uh, start to retrack through our data tree right so um, instead of just directly replacing them which wasn't uh, working uh, exactly how we wanted we're going to do one more um, step, right? So instead of just having our um, branches as uh, numerical values with one level, we're going to add a level based on the distance. So what I'm going to do is take these um, these values here, and I don't know what the kind of extents of them are. It looks like it goes up to about 20.95 for me, uh, but yours might be something completely different, right? But I want to take these things and turn them into, uh, which are distance values, into like a relative value for how far along uh, each one of these paths, uh, sorry, each one of these polylines is uh, in the list. So what we can do is um, let's take all of this uh, set of distance values and remap them into a new set of values. So if I go to the domain tab under math and I do remap, I want to take all these values and turn them into something new. So this asks for the values to remap the source domain and the target domain. So what was this collection of distance values that exist between these min this minimum and this maximum using the bounds object? What was between those will now be between uh, zero and some integer that I specify. So if I say 1 less than uh, 7 less than 15, this will now take all those values and remap them to the new set of values. And if I round those using an integer object uh, from the params primitive tab, so an integer container, I now have um, a list of zeros, ones, twos, threes, etc., up until seven. Now, what is that going to allow me to do? Well, if I take the result of that and match it with this original uh, set of resorted um, paths, we can put those together into a new um, a new data path that will redefine our data tree. So let's bring those two together. Um, this is going to be um, our new A, and this is going to be our new B, the uh, actual index that's coming through here. So let's merge those things together, um, A and B. But we want to make sure that A is grafted, so I'll graft back here, so that now we have a bunch of lists of two. Perfect. Right? So again, all the first items are going to be a and this is going to be B. So if I take that and compose a new branch, uh, create path. Right now I have 0, 0241, 0, 0256 in the correct path structure. And now I can use my replace, right, which takes 
um, the original data, which is at Simplify, back here, my search paths, which are back here, my search masks, and then here, this collection of um, data paths, which I need to use my flip matrix to go back to a single list. All right, so now what do I have here? I have um, all of my values being resorted and instead of uh, ascending, it looks like we have uh, descending, right, in terms of their order in this list. But let's uh, show the data path in the viewport so we can see exactly what's happening. So here are my, uh, my polyline centers, and I'm going to go back to using my uh, text tag 3D. Here's my location, and I want to use the tree statistics to define what text will be shown. Remember, you have to graph here again. And let's go ahead and use a slider to change the size. Okay. So um, you can see down here that we have all of the uh, close elements are going to be um, all well, the close elements are going to be higher in the data structure, and the far ones are going to be lower. Back here we have like the uh, lowest ones. So all we have to do if we want to swap that out would be to uh, reverse. Okay, let's see if this works. No, that didn't work. Yes, reverse K, and now all the way back here we have the closest, closer ones and uh, the farther ones uh, back there. All right, so um, now we have a kind of custom hierarchical data tree based on the um, uh, matrix of uh, polylines, and again, it's going to be relative to this bounding rectangle and the point that corresponds with it. Now, why is this useful? Well, Coming out of um, our replace, which was the last uh, kind of significant part of our file, this is just for preview purposes, these are our resorted uh, polylines. So if I were to, let's say, um, shift paths back one level, so I'm back to just um, my eight paths here based on my slider, and I visualize each one of these in a, uh, each one of these kind of bands, um, with color, it might be a little bit easier to see where uh, the application might be for creating your own custom hierarchy this way. So in doing this, I have um, eight paths. So what I'm going to do is, again, use my tree statistics to find out how many paths I have, which is eight. And I'm doing this here dynamically with the tree statistics so that if something changes upstream in my file, it will still work. And then I'm going to... Um, use two color swatches here and here. And I'm going to weave, no sorry, repeat these two colors, white then magenta, this many times. And then I can use that as a cu uh, custom uh, preview uh, color. If I graphed, put that into here. All right, so now what I have is a very easily understandable kind of repeating bands based on however many of these uh, data paths I want to create, right? And um, the idea here is that what we can do is start to reorganize things in a way that allows us, let's say again, if we're trying to make this out of material, we're laser cutting these triangles, um, that we can start to uh, cut them and then assemble them in an order that makes sense, like incrementally, right? Just for fun, let's go ahead and turn the uh, triangles into a simple mesh, and then um, I 
Is that going to work? You can also do a planar surface. That's funny. All right, it doesn't like that. Uh, all right, so let's keep it as, uh, as polylines. All right, so now we have our custom uh, structure of polylines organized in a particular data tree that we've defined on our own by sorting something relative to this point, which again, we can modify and it will update the sorting. All right, so I added a couple of extra things in the reference file uh, that you might find of interest if you review the original one. Um, but now let's go ahead and bounce back over to the, um, the last part of the presentation.